in a white paradise in Lapland, in the very north of Finland. Like every day or almost every day, Alina, accompanied by her friend Ida, set off in search of the ideal spot to indulge in a totally crazy passion. I'm starting to get hot. All this snow is heavy. Dipping in ice water is very popular in Finland. To do this, Alina must first clear the ice layer of this frozen lake using this giant drill. Oh, it's thick. <laughs> now when it has been so cold, the ice is really strong. But at the beginning of the winter, the ice is not... You have to be careful. The biggest mistake to do that. Uh, you actually fall with all your clothes in the water and you get cold with that. <laughs> After that, a good saw. Outside, it's minus 15. Nothing exceptional for the young woman. You can actually take, there's the wooden stick. Let's see. Yeah, it's stuck now. One, two, three. Under the thick layer, of more than 50 centimeters of ice. <laughs> Luckily, the water is a bit cooler than the air, just 0 0.2 degrees. Yeah, I'm ready to go in. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Alina is barely shivering. It's after the first shock or after you control your breath, so you start relaxing also, so you kind of forget thinking of the cold. An invigorating bath with numerous virtues. It strengthens the immune system, evacuates stress. A health routine for this tax advisor repeated almost daily. Alina even happily shares her exploits on social media. Her friend Ida, who works in tourism, is less used to it. How you, do you feel? I feel okay. It's just cold. <laughs> yeah, that's enough for me. <laughs> Barely 20 seconds in the water. Now I feel great. <laughs> Ida has a lot to be proud of. She showed courage a virtue necessary to flourish in these polar regions. Kind of state of mind. Finnish people usually say that they have sisu. So the sisu is about that you go out of your comfortable zone. Finnish people are kind of the people that like to, like to also push themselves, so. After having pushed back the limits of cold, the two friends must stop by this public sauna with large windows giving on the outside. An almost sacred place in a country with more saunas than inhabitants. It will always make you feel good and uh, you can forget all your kind of doubts or, and stress and uh, bad feelings. So, yeah, I think that's our hidden gem. <laughs> One of the secrets of happiness in the Finnish way. In the very north of Europe, bordered by the Baltic Sea, it is a country with the harshest climate in the world. However, the nearly 6 million Finns would be the happiest on the planet. The country was even elected champion of happiness five times, according to a very serious international ranking by the United Nations. I would not One change of the reasons my life for happiness, for anything a rich country. World. Ten times less populated than France, with a high standard of living, Average salary of 3,500 euros among the promising sectors, tech giants and telephony, like the former leader Nokia, but also services or the wood industry. Another strong point, a very generous social model with a free health and above all, education system. Come on, kids. Considered as references at the international level. No insecurity and an omnipresent nature with miles of forests and thousands of lakes. 
Finland is also an endless winter with no sun. We live in the darkness for like nine months of the year. More serious dark points, tarnishing the picture of the ideal country. Intrafamily violence and alcohol consumption remains very high. It is a major public health issue in Finland. Located on the edge of Europe, the country shares a border of 1,300 kilometers with the belligerent Russian neighbor. The invasion of Ukraine heightens tensions and relaunches the question of Helsinki's membership in NATO. Sacrilege for Moscow. In Helsinki, bunkers have even been planned to house the population. Blast-proof doors to take the impact of any kind of uh, explosion. Are the Finns really happy? Let's immerse ourselves in this singular country of saunas and a unique feature, a predominantly female government. A national passion for metal music, even in churches. Some culinary quirks, like cheese dipped in coffee. It's hot, it's so good. Investigating the land of happiness. Along the peaceful waters of the Gulf of Finland is Helsinki and its rosary of islands. 650,000 inhabitants, or the equivalent of the Nantes metropolis, a human-sized capital with an abundance of nature and beaches at your fingertips. A small paradise that seduces many families. Clement, 42 years old and agri-food executive, lives here with Kathy, his Finnish wife and their two children, in this large four-room apartment with integrated sauna. Nearly 20 years ago, he left his native south to study in this Nordic country. He found love here and he stayed, much to the surprise of his new compatriots. Finns don't necessarily understand why I'm here. Personally, I understand that 17 years later, I really like being here. The quality of life is great. For good reason, everything is simple here. In the Finnish capital, two times bigger than Paris, traffic jams, for example, are almost non-existent. We save time and we realize the amount of time that some people lose in traffic jams and we just don't lose any. It's very pleasant. After 10 short minutes behind the wheel, the forest already reigns supreme. It covers nearly 70% of the national territory. If you eat that, your stomach will hurt. In Finland, accessing forests is not a simple hobby. It is a fundamental right enshrined in the law. You can say it, it's everyone's right. It means that we really have the right to go wherever we want. Even if it's private land, it's allowed. It implies leaving it in the same condition we found it. I think that is the basic principle. You're both really purple. No matter who owns the plot, nature is for everyone. For Clement and his family, this was the perfect Sunday outing. Picnic near the lake, a collective barbecue in this public grill. Have some marshmallows, children. Say thank you. Have some more. Can I eat my sausage? Grilling sausages in nature, I think that's one of the Finnish definitions of happiness. Simple pleasures, like this country without fuss. For total happiness, the authorities have thought about everything. Particularly about the logs made available to strollers free of charge. It's good wood. The wood for these public grills is cut not far away, by these rather peculiar lumberjacks. Because Mocha and Juo are first and foremost prisoners. In this national park, they spend the day doing community service, with no supervisor in sight, and of course, they love it. 
I love this job. I'm calm, in the middle of nature, all alone, and with no one on my back. Get that down. Like Juo, Mocha has an explosive resume. Seven convictions for violence. Nine years in prison in total, he has 18 months left to serve. In the woods, he has a means of transport and sharp tools at his disposal. But there is no question of escaping. On his ankle, there is an electronic bracelet connected to this small phone. If the two devices are separated, an alert is immediately triggered. For example, if I ran away, I would immediately be put back in prison under very unpleasant conditions. In very unpleasant places, I don't be able to work anymore or see my family. You're stuck in your cell and you watch the world go by. Above all, Mocha is quite satisfied with his lot. In addition to spending his days in the woods, this former truck driver is training for a new job driving forestry machinery. In addition, he is saving money while awaiting his release. He is paid 5 euros per hour. It's obviously not a good salary, but it's good to be able to get out of prison and to be able to rest easy here. Finland is one of the countries where it is the most pleasant to be in prison. Like him, Hundreds of prisoners work in the forest without worries, alongside strollers. Like a foretaste of freedom. It's nice here, I feel free. Free? Well, not quite. Pending his release, every evening, he sleeps in prison. At the entrance, no watchtowers, no barbed wire a simple electric gate. It's a so-called open prison, like nearly 50% of Finnish penitentiary institutions, for prisoners with light sentences or who have shown good behavior. Mocha does not sleep in a cell, but in a single room, whose key he also has. Management did not allow us to film the inside of the premises of this establishment which was far from being overcrowded. Not all of the 136 rooms available are occupied. If the prisons are far from full in Finland, it is for a very simple reason. The crime rate is among the lowest in the world. Peace of mind guaranteed for all inhabitants, including Klamath, the father of a Franco-Finnish family. Though he still has to accompany five-year-old Elmo to Kindergarten, Elias, eight, goes to school alone. Like all the little Finns of his age. The first time in Finland when I saw little seven-year-olds walking in the middle of winter in the dark in suburban neighborhoods is weird at first, but eventually, when it's one of your own, you get used to it. <laughs> Very soon, you will also be walking alone, on foot. Though not without risk, attacks and kidnappings are extremely rare. The only precautions to take. The jumpsuits. That I got. It. To be well covered, we are at the end of summer. 15 degrees of temperature on average and often much lower. In France, children would dress like that in November. It's the end of August and at the beginning of October, we're going to switch to wearing really big jumpsuits until April. Goodbye, my big guy. Goodbye, Dad. To reach his school, Elias has a 20-minute walk alone through the woods. If Clement is not worried about the safety of his son, he doesn't fear for thieves either. For example, we're going to do a little test. Let's get a wallet.
A few cards, including his business card with his phone number plus a 20 euros note. We're going to drop it off somewhere and we're going to see what happens. At our request, Clement puts the yellow wallet in plain sight on this bench near a bus stop. Soon after, some children spot it and alert a person passing by. After a quick check, the cyclist takes a detour into this shop, then goes away. Fifteen minutes later, Clement has got his wallet back. Nothing missing. I got a call from the local tobacco store. Someone found it on the bench. The money is there, the cards are there, everything is there. Unsurprisingly, according to a recent study by the World Economic Forum, Finland is simply the safest destination in the world. In the land of happiness, these approximately 6 million inhabitants live a peaceful life. However, This is their favorite music. Finland is the home of metal with the world record for groups per inhabitant. The most famous Lordi. These creatures straight out of the underworld sing the apocalypse with joy. In 2006, they won Eurovision and revealed the Finnish metal scene to the world. From melodic metal with wild cellists. To the trashiest currents, seven and satanic atmosphere, there is something for all tastes and ages. From the cradle, the fins are fed at high decibels. Near Lodi, about a hundred kilometers from Helsinki. I have everything I need. Manta, Alma and their friends are getting ready to go see their idols on stage. The metal stars group for less than 10 years old, the Heavy Horus, a very nice gift offered by their mom Petra. But in the morning, it start hurting the stomach because it's going to be an exciting day. According to this 43-year-old education counselor, this national passion for metal has a meteorological explanation. We live so up north. We live in the darkness for like nine months of the year. But it's not like... Uh, like that all we have uh, depression or something like that. It's just that some of us get empowered by the metal music because it's hard. It's like if life kick you, you kick it back or something like that mental. I'm not... Oh, yeah. The heavy horrors play in this large, sold-out hall in front of nearly 1,000 little fans. In the hallway, Alma and her friends are given the ultimate privilege before the show begins. Hi. <laughs> Passing by the locker room to greet the equivalent of our very own Chantal Goya, but in a different version. Dinosaurs made of leather and dreadlocks. It was kind of you to come see us. Soon it will be our turn. We're going to have lots of fun, okay? We'll see you on stage, okay? Like any group aimed at a young audience, they sing about the hassles of the playground. With guitar riffs and head swings. Kids love it. At the other end of the spectrum, there are more trendy pepper and salt than blonde heads. 
Here is another metal fan. Aka, Spring 69, a happy fin. I'm very happy, yes. I have everything I need. I have my family and I have my work. That's enough. Aka works in this parish. Contrary to what his appearance might suggest. He is a pastor, a Protestant like 70% of Finns. Today he welcomes musicians and singers for a singular service, a metal mass that made him famous in Finland. Yeah. He's my best friend. Do you know him? Yes, of course. Okay. God and metal. On paper, a mismatch. Aka was even severely criticized at first. I, uh, I remember once that one guy came and said that I came because afterwards I can blame you because you are satanic persons. After that, no, I can't do it. It was so great. It was so wonderful. <laughs> Since then, it no longer shocks anyone. Believers or non-believers are in a hurry to attend these explosive masses where earplugs are distributed at the entrance. It is necessary because it's a loud music tonight. Yes. Behind the scenes, Aka swapped his killer look for the pastoral dress. The pastor enters the scene. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Big sound and black dress code. The musicians are reinterpreting with metal style texts that are not provocative. Religious songs contained in his mass booklets. With the exception of a few sensitive ears, the audience is won over. Heavy metal music, religion. I think all three go very well together. This was so awesome. This was so... I love heavy metal and I, I, I love this massive sense of churches also. So this was... Do you love me? Of course. <laughs> of course. Hacka is happy. Tonight, thanks to metal, he may have won the hearts of new followers. We return the calm, quiet streets of Helsinki, of Helsinki, of new followers. The secrets of Finnish happiness may also be worth looking for behind the thick walls of parliament. At the heart of power, this is Santa Marin, 36 years old, the most powerful woman in the country. Youngest sitting prime minister in the world. I would like to thank Parliament for the trust that it gave me for this position of responsibility. In this parliamentary republic, President Sali Ninisto, who is elected by universal suffrage, sets the guidelines for foreign policy. But it is the prime minister appointed by Parliament who runs the country. For this, Santa Marin surrounded herself with women. Twelve out of the 19 members of her government, a unique situation in the world. They have made gender equality a light motive in a country that was already a pioneer in this field. Finland is the first country in Europe to have granted women the right to vote as early as 1906. At 34, Bly Anderson is Minister of Education. No tailor, no high-heeled shoes. The young woman has a relaxed Finnish style. The fact that we use the same public transport and the same sports and that we 
uh, also like live and walk around without security, that's not a surprise. I think most people know that. Here is her ministry, a humble building. The only distinctive sign, these small surveillance video cameras. Surveillance cameras and this sign. The minister works in sneakers. She communicates mainly via social networks and gladly shares her joy as a young mother. I think here is like where my daughter was just born, like from the hospital. <laughs> Happiness, which she experienced when she was already in government. This was, for example, like uh, in my summer holiday, having a nap with my daughter. I was still on parental leave when it was like super hot outside. So. <laughs> it was also a way of me to kind of set an example and show that you don't have to choose between like doing a political career and having a family. I would say it's a lot easier here and there's a lot has been done in terms of gender equality in Finland, but it's like we're not done. <laughs> we're not like at the end point yet, but something that we have to work with all the time, of course. Flagship measure of her government the extension of parental leave. Seven months for mothers and fathers, which is the longest parental leave in the world to share the workload. In the meantime, it's now time for Lai Anderson's lunch break that she takes with her colleague right across the street from her ministry in this small restaurant with very attractive prices. In Finland, it must be said, we do not play with public money. Good morning. A lunch package, please. Madam Minister pays with her own credit card, and excluding yeah, working lunch with guests, she is not allowed to have restaurant tickets. So it's only if there is maybe a meeting or something that there might be a coffee and some bread or fruit. <laughs> If the public would like to know or if journalists would like to know how money is spent, they have the right to get all the information about what, what the ministry has spent money on. You can see it's like receipt for receipt, so it's kind of very detailed. The press reveals that Santa Marin doesn't pay for her morning coffee and cereal herself. It's completely legal, but breakfast gate is breaking out. In question, 300 euros worth of breakfast per month. They concluded that it's it's uh, her own expense, not the taxpayer's expense. What, so she will pay for all the breakfast herself, although it's uh, done in the prime minister's residence. If in France these sums seem trivial, this scandal has seriously upset Santa Marin. In Finland. Transparency is taken to the extreme. As incredible as it may seem here, everyone can access the finances of their neighbor or colleague. This data is unveiled every year in mid-November, during an extraordinary day when the press makes a killing. Hi. At 7.30 am, the start of the marathon for Marie Putas, journalist at IITA Letty, one of the most powerful tabloids in the country. Some people call this day also Jealous Day, Finnish Jealous Day. <laughs> there are people who call this day the Day of Jealousy, where the tax administration publishes everyone's accounts of more than 5 million inhabitants. Marie's mission, to collect the crudest information, the salaries of Finnish stars. To do this, she has an informative choice, Juo, a tax agent, who's going to spend the whole day online with her. Well, that's true. For well, today, it does give me work. In advance, Marie prepared lists and lists of personalities. The influencer Sophia Jessica Bullorf is number Jessica one Bullorf. for us. He, he's the number one person to know. <laughs> His income, so he's like a famous, some influencer. There's a list like singers and other artists and TV personalities. After that, all you have to do is ask Juo by simply giving a name plus a date of birth and a region if there are homonyms. Pelorf Sofia Jessica. She was born in 1990. Almost instantly, through interposed screens, the tax officer transmits taxable income, 
and the Instagram star's taxes. Murray takes a photo and immediately sends it to her colleague. The article is all ready. All you have to do is fill in the blanks with the correct figures and post it on the newspaper's website. 65,209 is not much. That is 5,000 euros per month, much more anyway than the median Finnish salary of 3,500 euros, twice as much as in France. Marco Ascari Letoman is the head of the political service and economic tabloid. How is it going here? With his team, he goes through the accounts of political figures and big bosses. Not all income is taxable, such as bonuses or certain dividends, and therefore do not appear. In his opinion, this examination is beneficial for the country. If we, we wouldn't have a transparency in the, the, the tax information, then we would found, uh, I think, in some point, some scams. It, 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 it's, it's more beneficial for everybody in Finland than, than it would be a um, secret. As a result, according to the latest report by the NGO Transparency International, Finland is among the least corrupt countries in the world, far ahead of France, which ranks 23rd. It's not just the press that has access to this very personal information. In all tax centers in the country, computers are made available to the public with search software. It's a free to use, please. Okay. So but you can't print it. You just ah. have to look and, and make some kind of notes or film Photos. It. Photos, it's okay. fine. At random, we type in the name of the tabloid's political department head, Marco Oscari Lettonen. Oscar Lettonen. Let's try. And immediately. Roughly 60,000 euros over one year and about 20,000 euros in taxes. Curiously, get your colleague's salary in one click or your neighbor's. That doesn't seem to excite the Finns very much. That morning, there were just seven men who came to find out before applying for a new job. And I would like to know that in what level the, the, the employee salaries have been in that firm. And so you're not disappointed about the amount? Um, yes, um, well, maybe a bit, <laughs> but uh, at least now I know in what level they are. And what can I propose? A voyeuristic system for many, but which is perfectly justified, according to Tato von Kono of the Tax Administration. All the persons that we tax are there. So you see that the taxation is working. So that's the, maybe the deeper reason. The tax that finances the generous Finnish social model, and which is very widely approved by taxpayers. Despite a high tax rate, around 40%. 80% of Finns say they are happy to pay taxes. Two months later in January, Helsinki has entered winter on full foot. Minus 5 degrees of average temperature and 4 hours of sunshine per day. Now, even at 12 p.m., the sun barely rises above the treetops. So the Finns, are they always as happy? For Clement, originally from the south of France, adapting was not easy at first. The hardest thing to live with is not the cold, but the lack of light. The first year we saw the light for 20 hours, the sun for 20 hours during the month of November, throughout the month of November. I remember it very, very well. It's very, very surprising at first. Then the light goes down, the light continues to dim to the point where it feels like the sun is a small lamp that will disappear. From those who are not used to it, Finnish winter is not a piece of cake. Sleep disorders, fatigue, even depression. A lot of inconveniences against which there are, however, a few tips. If necessary, we need a small light therapy lamp. For example, you can switch on a quarter of an hour in the morning when we have breakfast. It is really the worst season, which is usually November, December. These are really the hardest months. It is not a miracle solution. It's not worth a plane ticket to a country in the south. Let's be very frank. Here are Elias's pills. Elias is entitled to two pills a day 
calcium, and vitamin D. For parents, drink this energizing cocktail every morning. It's cold today, be careful. I'm talking about less than minus 12 or minus 13. In a full suit, Elias is ready. As usual, at the age of eight, he goes to school alone, in the dark and icy night. I'm not very cold. Sometimes it's worse. Come on, kids. But especially after school, Elias and his family enjoyed numerous benefits of a winter that can last five months. Ski resort atmosphere in the heart of Helsinki. Not too loud, not too loud. Sledge. That's enough. Cross-country skiing. And ice skates on the soccer field converted into an ice rink after intervention by the municipal services. From an early age, little Finns become specialists, slips of all kinds, and the handling of the hockey stick. We understand why the Finns have been world hockey champions several times when you see them. Come on, let's skate. Don't run, skate. In a less sporty version, another unique activity on the waters of the Gulf of Finland. A stroll on the sea, frozen for at least two months a year. Attention children, it may crack a little. There and that's it. We're really on the sea. It's okay, after that it won't crack anymore. It is magnificent. We are not on an Arctic expedition. We are eight kilometers from the center of Helsinki. There, there is one of the biggest universities in the country. Another advantage in winter, when the cold is biting, the Finnish capital has developed an underground network to allow residents to stay warm. In total, about 20 kilometers of tunnels and shopping galleries that connect the main points from downtown Helsinki. That is not all. Underground up to 80 meters deep, there are also sports fields. A swimming pool. or even a karting track. And the underground city continues to expand. Hi, Serpa Kallio oversees underground development in Helsinki. Capital building on this rock, granite. A blessing for engineers in public works. As you can see, it's uh, rather solid, dusty and dirty but solid <laughs> and very hard. Since we don't get new land, we have to excavate it from, from here. Serpa's objective, not to saturate the city on the surface and maintain a pleasant living environment for its inhabitants. The town hall is renovating a market here and adds a large basement for trucks and goods storage. All connected to a new metro station. Now the saying that you want to walk with Kuivin jaloin with dry feet because half of the year is wet and snowy and cold and we hate it. <laughs> so, so that's why all these uh, possibilities to, to walk inside and with dry feet is appreciated. End of the project scheduled in two years. What most Finns don't know, it's just that all these underground facilities, swimming pool, karting, subways also have a completely different function. There are bunkers to shelter the population in the event of an attack. On the world map, Finland does indeed occupy a strategic position in Europe. At the gates of the big Russian neighbor, considered a threat at all times. The country shares a border of more than 1,000, 300 kilometers with Russia. 
the war in Ukraine has rekindled ancient traumas. During the Second World War in 1939, the Red Army invaded Finland. Despite the fierce resistance of the Finns, the violent conflicts with the USSR leave the Nordic country exhausted. Since then, Helsinki has applied a policy of strict neutrality vis-a-vis -vis Moscow. Today the country that has its own army and is still mandatory military service for boys, leans more and more towards NATO and has been preparing for the worst for a long time. In Helsinki, bunkers are scattered across the city, marked by the discrete blue triangle. This sign is Geneva Conventions. It's an international sign for civil defense and it gives uh, protection to people taking cover, taking shelter here. And Jury Mark Annan is in charge of the maintenance of these essential sites for Helsinki City Hall. And these, these doors are the blast-proof doors to take the impact of any kind of uh, explosion happening outside the uh, shelter. Behind its doors, these premises are able to accommodate 6,000 people in the neighborhood, and everything has been planned. All these yellow squares will be equipped with toilet compartment like this, dry toilet compartment. So there's emergency time ventilation system, so the odors don't stay here, they are taken away. There's beds for 2,000 people. After eight hours, they shift. On the wall, you can see the red dots, and between these red dots, we put a wire and a curtain so that the 6,000 people can be divided to smaller group. Hopefully, we'll, we will never need these. Change of atmosphere and return to the open air. Head for the far north in the Reindeer Kingdom in Lapland. This region of the polar circle is spread over four countries. In Finland, it represents one-third of the territory, but with only 180,000 inhabitants, indomitable people acclimatized to extreme conditions, down to minus 40 degrees. And for over a month, no more sun at all, it's polar night. A few hours a day only, the horizon brightens, trenching the tundra with a strange light. However, nothing in the world would make this family live elsewhere. Alongside his wife Odie and their daughter Nari, Kale raises reindeer for their meat and their skins. Before the development of tourism in the region 30 years ago, livestock farming was almost the only source of income for its inhabitants. Reindeers are my whole life. I would not change for anything in the world, ever. <laughs> Kale comes from the Sami minority, an indigenous people who have always lived on these frozen lands, formerly called the Laps. So, the extreme cold does nothing to him, or almost nothing. At what temperature do you consider it cold? When it was minus 50, it was cold. <laughs> How is the temperature today minus 15? I'm sweating. <laughs> With less than two inhabitants per square kilometer, it is also better to enjoy solitude to be happy in Lapland. You need to be a bit antisocial, <laughs> maybe. But then I had once an old pair from Estonia. She thought that it's so scary here when you live so 
far away from other people. And so I, and I th just thought that she comes from Tallinn, so I thought big cities are much more dangerous than living here. No need. <laughs> Eli, uh, so this is how we met. I came to buy the reindeer skin. I thought that's a nice guy. And then I made a mushroom pie next time. And I came, brought it here. And I said that he can bring the plate back. Eikö niin, että sä toisin sienipiirka ja sitten siitä se lähtikin. Se on astin takaisin. Niin. Yes, they are warm and, <laughs> and they, they are good for love. <laughs> Audi never left. She is a doctor, and with Kale, they had this big and beautiful house built in the middle of the forest. Skins of animals, bears, and other deer. Traditional wood fired sauna, large living room. In Lapland, people love their home as much as nature. In this family, reindeers play a central role even on the plate. This is my favorite. You need to chew. This is reindeer tongue. It's a delicacy. It's a myth, myth that you shouldn't eat the tip of the tongue. So you cut the tip away and you can use the rest of the... So I cut the tip away because I don't want us bad luck. A delicacy that will delight even the youngest. Ineri and her girlfriends included. For dessert, another surprise with the all-finished tasting of this cow's cheese. Got leipäjuusta, bread cheese, and you can either eat it like this or heat it in the microwave and have it with jam. Or then the traditional way is that you put it to the coffee and then it sort of gets nice and warm. And, mm, you hear it when you <coughs> eat it, it's like... Mm. <laughs> The next morning at 7 a.m., cleaning chore for Odie in the dark night. And it's part of the na nature, living li in the nature. Nearly 50 centimeters of snow fell and no brightness is to be expected before the end of the morning. Nothing to slow Odie down, who knows this frozen, unlit country road by heart. If you start to be afraid of driving in the dark or cold or snow, then you just, you can't live here. An hour later, she has arrived in Ivalo, 3,000 inhabitants on the counter. It is the major urban center of this region of northern Lapland, with the only supermarkets and service stations miles away. Dr. Odi works at the hospital. Get in. This morning, his consultation day starts with Joan, nearly 90 years old. The old man had a big fall in the snow. He fell in the forest and went to the right side. No broken bones, but there is uh, some inflammation and some degeneration, so I'll put corticosteroid and some... Falls and accidents, Adi sees a lot of them. Most of the time, it's not simple clumsiness. In winter in Lapland, alcohol consumption breaks records. Every week we have mostly a man in uh, our ward trying to get stop the uh, drinking or then we treat the side effects when you stop drinking. A drunken person has fallen asleep in the snow and then uh, yeah, some of the distal uh, parts of the body ha had to be amputated or then uh, you fall and you might get some uh, fro froze bites uh, somewhere else that cause problems. Alcohol is one of the leading causes of death in Finland. At the origin of many ills, particularly domestic violence, which is still very high. One of the few black spots in this almost ideal society. In this association, violent men are taken care of and put back on track. Like Maiko, 
a 35-year-old accountant. Mulla niitä litsareita yritti siis sen edessä sitten antaa ja sitten mä torjuin niitä ja työnsin hänet keittiöön ja et siinä vaiheessa Olavi ei enää nähnyt, kun mä otin olla niin puolisoistakin hiuksistakin ja et se pysy paikallaan. Mm. Mm. Uh, well we are both from uh, like alcoholic family so like I have had many situations in my life where I recognize physical and mental violence. There's, uh, uh, alcohol involved in those situations. Olivi, a construction worker, experienced the same excesses. Like Maiko, he decided to change by himself. He has participated in these talking groups for four years. I used to process everything through anger. I yelled to my wife, I yelled to my children. It, it came concrete to me when my three-year-old son said, Father, I'm afraid of you. Yes, I'm proud of myself from coming here because it was the best decision of my life to be a better person. If the perfect society does not exist, the secret to finish happiness may be quite simple after all. Focus on the positive and take advantage of what you have, regardless of the conditions. After a day at work at the hospital, Odie sets off into the white immensity. In Lapland, life doesn't end when it's dark. This is my paradise. I've I feel happy here. I've told to everybody that I won't leave this place before I'm in the wooden box. <laughs> Soon the moon will be replaced by the sun, which will warm its frozen lake and will end up not setting at all. A joy that the Finns, no doubt more than the others, have learned to enjoy.